All right, so the House of Commons uh, Defence Committee, uh, it's hoped, at least uh, on the opposition part, that they will have this meeting and, and have hearings to call witnesses into the Mark Norman affair. And uh, there is a meeting in this committee tomorrow for regular business, but let's find out what might happen with these hearings about the Mark Norman case. Let's bring in uh, three members of the Defence Committee tonight to have this conversation. Uh, Mark Gerritsen, you can see from the foyer of the House of Commons, there, there, is a Liberal member of the committee. James Bazan is the Defence Critic for the Official Opposition, and Randall Garrison is the def Defence Critic for the NDP. Mr. Gerritsen, let me start with you. Uh, will the Liberals support the demand for hearings into the Mark Norman case? Well, I mean, I think for starters, I will say that, you know, we've had a very successful committee uh, over the last three and a half years. Uh, the vast majority of reports that we've produced coming out of that committee have been unanimous reports. So I take very serious when the opposition members bring forward such a motion. And I don't want to preempt by saying whether or not I'll support it or not at this point. I want to hear what they have to say as it relates to, um, uh, you know, why they want to bring forward this motion. I will say from the outset that it is very clear from both the Public Prosecution Service and the defense lawyer that there was absolutely no uh, political interference here. So in order for me to be convinced when we do have this meeting, I'm going to need to hear why, uh, you know, they think that despite that information, we still need to proceed with a meeting like this. All right, Mr. Bazan, uh, what can you say to convince Mr. Gerritsen? Well, when we get to debating the motion at the uh, Defence Committee, uh, and I do uh, take Mark at his word, I, I hope that Liberal members will come to committee with an open mind, uh, that they will respect the independence of parliamentary committees. Um, but I think it is important that we do two things. One is that we give an opportunity for Vice Admiral Mark Norman to talk about what happened to him, very similar to what happened in, in the SNC-Lavalin uh, scandal and allowing Jody Wilson-Raybould uh, to, to speak her truth at the Justice Committee. So there is an opportunity to do that. And secondly, it's about having a parliamentary investigation done publicly so that uh, there's full transparency and, and we can talk to the different players that are listed in our motion uh, to come out and speak speak about the, their role in what happened to Vice Admiral right. Mark Norman. I mean, now, Mark, now, Norman, Mark Norman could speak anywhere, I suppose, Mr. Bazan. Well, why, why is it, and, and he's suggested he will at some point have more to his story. Why is it so important to get him before a committee, though? Well, I think there's a number of questions around uh, how he was treated, uh, how his good reputation uh, was undermined. Uh, and besmirched by the government. Uh, we know that at the beginning of this that uh, Prime Minister Trudeau himself twice publicly stated that uh, Vice Admiral Norman was going to be charged and in court when, you know, that we're talking months before the RCMP even laid charges. And so even though, to, 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 to Darren's point, that we have uh, the comments from the, 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 the Crown as well as from the, uh, the Mark Norman's defence team, they clearly stated there is no political interference in lane of the charges or in the stain of the breach of trust charges. Right. And so at, 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 it's what happened in between. And okay. as Marie Hennon actually said, there are still documents that were withheld. There is documents that were redacted. And of course, uh, all evidence wasn't all right, turned over to uh, the defense team. And okay, so Ms. And she said she was still okay, waiting, okay, hang on. Let, let's move. Ms. Ms. Let me, Mr. For, Garrison. For information that was subpoenaed. Okay, Mr. Oh. Mr. Garrison, why do you think we need these hearings? Well, I think it's very important that we give Vice Admiral Norman a chance to tell his story on the record uh, in a televised committee meeting so that the whole nation can hear. His, de his uh, long service to the country, uh, exemplary service, has been irreparably damaged by this affair. And so he should be able to come and tell his story about the effects on him and his family of what's actually happened. The other person I'd really like to hear from is the Minister of Defense, who said that he regretted what happened and what, what Vice Admiral Norman had to go through. And I'd like to know what he means by regret. Does he regret that because he withheld information? Does he regret that? Uh, because he could have done more to make sure this this prosecution didn't go forward. It's a kind of peculiar phrase from the minister when what I'd like to have seen was an apology for what happened to Vice Admiral Norman. So okay. there's more than just Mr. Norman that we'd like to hear in committee on what actually happened here. Okay, Mr. Gerritsen, uh, we're, we're just a few minutes into our yeah. conversation. How convinced are you? <laughs> not very convinced. Why not? The, the reality of the situation is, is I think that with all due respect to Mr. Ger Mr. Garrison, he's perhaps taking out of context what the minister said. I mean, I I think we all regret when somebody has to go through something like this that it is found out later on that maybe they shouldn't have had to go through. But I think, you know, to Mr. But, but the whole process, Mr. Bizant's But the whole point, process started with the Privy Council going after, trying to find who the leaker was and, 
and setting their sights on, on Mark Norman. Yes, but the entire process happened with both the RCMP and the Public uh, Prosecution Service happened entirely independent. Those are two entirely independent organizations of the, the political arm of... After uh, the Privy Council started it. At, they're entirely <laughs> independent. And to Mr. Bazan's point about the documents, 8,000 documents were turned over to the court from uh, at the request of, uh, uh, of the court. Those documents were redacted only by the court and then provided. So they weren't, you know, Mr. Bazan would like to paint the picture that they were redacted by the government, but the truth of the matter is, is that is not how it happened. Okay, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bazan, I guess one of the questions that you hope a, a, a committee will answer is, you know, uh, the statement you mentioned with the Prime Minister, uh, two statements that a, a prosecution was coming. Uh, what is it you're suggesting that points to? I mean, a lot of people say, uh, I can't talk about this, it's before the courts, or it's, it might be before the courts. You thought you heard something more definitive in his comments, is that right? Well, we're now no longer before the courts on the Mike, Mark Norman case, and so we can have these conversations. The Prime Minister should appear at committee and explain his comments uh, and uh, what role he played in, in ultimately the Privy Council office is asking the RCMP to lay charges against Vice Admiral Mark Norman. Uh, you know, uh, we want to hear from Minister Sajan, uh, not just on whether or not he regrets it and whether or not there will be an apology, but, you know, Darren, uh, I, and, and Randall deal with the Mark, military Mark. all the time. Mark, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Mark, <laughs> Darren and Randall and I deal all the time with uh, the military, and, I, and we all have been hearing from them that they do feel that this was a miscarriage of justice. So what role did uh, Minister Sajan play, as well as the Chief Defence Staff, okay. John Vance, there, in, 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 in blocking, in blocking, okay. wait, wait. But there's, four, but there's, there's 14, there's 14, I think there's 14 people 14 on the potential with, witnesses. Uh, there's still, I, there are still two other people out but there. Hang on, that, let me ask, that, the question. As, we, as we understand the story turning here, the Defence says that, you know, the Crown dropped the charges, the Crown says, because new evidence came what, forward. What, what's that evidence? We need well, to hear about that. That's well, up to it, Independent hang, hang organization on. to make that determination. Let me ask the question. Let me ask. Let me ask the question. It, it seems, by everything we've heard in the last few days, that it came from the input that the defense received from former Conservative cabinet ministers about the role Mark Norman was playing. Why aren't they on the potential witness list for this committee? Why isn't Peter McKay there? Why isn't Aaron O'Toole there? Why That's isn't... a very good question. Well, I, I can say this, that uh, first and foremost, uh, none of those individuals were, were interviewed by the RCMP or by the public prosecutor. Uh, and we, we should also well, point out... that's another question, and, and, isn't it? Why and, and not? We should, also, we should also point out that it was actually former Prime Minister Stephen Harper that said that he was prepared to waive all cabinet confidences as it revolved around uh, the contract, the shipbuilding contract. I'm just curious, shipyards. wouldn't it be good to hear from those ministers at your committee well, to find I, out what it is, maybe that's what it is that, that they told the defense that got Mark Norman so, got so, the charges so state? We, okay. we have the motion. They can, the, the Liberals who have the majority can either I accept the motion. They can amend the motion. They can add more names onto that witness okay. list if they feel feel that they should do that, or they can defeat the motion and and, and do a okay. cover up. Mr. But Garrison, I think what we on, want to me... see is, is is actually having as many witnesses as possible to talk about how uh, that there was potential okay. interference by the Prime Mr. Minister Gar and his okay. office on, and Mr. his Mr. liberal Mr. cronies. Mr. Garrison, what about uh, having those? Con I mean, do you, do you agree that the narrative seems to be now be that something those conservative former ministers said to the defense? Uh, was then passed on to the Crown, and the Crown said, wait a minute, we don't have enough to make these charges stick here. Do you want to hear from those ministers? Well, what we've been hearing from the, uh, the Liberals is about the resilience of our justice system and how it bounces back, but I'd like to know what it's bouncing back from. Mm -hmm. That appears to be pressure from the government. And so, really, who's directly responsible here are the people in the Privy Council office, uh, the Prime Minister's office, who started this witch hunt against Admiral Norman. It's not the former Conservative ministers who started it. If they have something to add to this story in terms of evidence, I'd be happy to hear from them as well, but they're not the ones responsible. They're not the ones who brought this forward. And so uh, I guess I'm disappointed. Again, we had an SNC Lavalin, and now we've got in the Mark Norman affair that we have to rely on the resilience of our justice system. I'm glad it's there. I trust it. I believe it's real. But who's putting the pressure on the justice system? It's certainly this government. But, but Mr. We, Mr. Gerritsen, let me, but, let me bring you back in here. But, uh, but we are not we are not the body that should be examining that information. We have those independent agencies through the RCMP so, and sounds like you the made, public prosecution. Sounds like you made service. up your mind. Well, no, it's it's not. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm, 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 I'm learning what their arguments are going to be right now, which is very important and it's, it's very relevant. But listen, just to one point that Mr. Bazan made a few moments ago. Don't forget, there are still two other individuals here who still are facing charges, yep. and any discussions that are had within uh, our committee could impact them. And that's another thing that 
we would have to uh, consider when making and this we'd decision. We'd make sure we wouldn't go anywhere near that, but we don't want to have any political interference or information leaked at a, ca a committee meeting that might impact that. Our, our but what we're talking about is the exact pressure that was brought by Prime Minister Trudeau, as well as the PCO, as well as Minister Sajan and his office, on uh, Vice Admiral Norman and, and the, the withholding of, of crucial evidence that they needed. And ultimately, uh, the question around what was that evidence that came out that that's ultimately had well, the, that's a good, the court that's a, case that's, dropped. That's a good point, Mr. Garrison. Uh, do you have any questions about, uh, I don't see anybody from the RCMP on your witness list either, and, and yet I think a lot of people are asking questions about how come the defense was finding evidence to uh, lead to the staying of charges against uh, Mr. Norman when the RCMP, uh, it's, it, it, it would appear by everything we know on the record so far that those former uh, Conservative cabinet ministers weren't approached by the RCMP as part of the investigation. Does that concern you? Well, um, what concerns me here is that when it's in the Liberals' interest, they're able to release information quite quickly. So we saw the Prime Minister's former Principal Secretary getting access to emails after he was not working there in mere days, where Admiral Norman had to fight for over a year and a half to get information crucial to his defence released. So again, we're back up to those decisions at a very, very high level here. This is not about what the RCMP did or didn't do. It's about what re information was released or not released to them so they could do their job. Okay. And one of those questions is what? Are the Liberals trying to hide? When, when, uh, what, give us a sense of the timetable here. When should we expect a, uh, this conversation to take place at committee, and when will we? Uh, well, our, our procedure sets out a certain amount of time. They're within uh, five days of receiving the request. The committee is required to, uh, or the chair of the committee is required to uh, inform the committee of when that meeting will be. And I so believe that, that's before the end of this week. Then, yeah, right? and, I, and I believe right. that the, I also believe that you are required to give 48 hours notice. So I'm sure that we'll see that coming out soon. So the people understand the process. So sometime before the end of this week, there will be a determination to hold a meeting. And then we're in a break week, right? So, it, well, I suppose you could have it during the break week. Yeah, at, uh, if it's it an would be at the will meeting. of the committee and the chair, for that matter. Okay. So, and, and as the motion says, that we'd like to have all these uh, hearings wrapped up by May 24th. So it is uh, possible, and if the decision days. is taken to actually uh, have these these hearings, that we would do it during the break week. Okay, uh, gentlemen. Thank you all for your time tonight. Uh, we'll continue to follow the story. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Peter.